Good day, good day everyone and once again we're back together and today we're looking at combined guest laws. Of course if you haven't subscribed please just make sure that you are part of this family. All right so let's just quickly have a recap. So we've looked at different guest laws right. Uh, we've looked at uh, Boyle's law and we said well under Boyle's law we know that we were uh, we were looking simply at the relationship between pressure and volume and we said the pressure and the volume uh, the product of the pressure and the volume will always give us a constant or if we want to look at it in another way uh, that pressure is inversely proportional to the volume of any gas meaning the greater the volume the larger the pressure okay or the smaller the pressure that is okay and we looked at Charles's law, right? So uh, Charles' law, in this case, when we looked at it, we looked at the relationship between volume and the temperature of a gas, right? And we said, well, if you look at it, in this case, it will give us a constant, or we can simply say the volume of a gas is directly proportional uh, to the temperature, Right, so we said volume is equal to a constant multiplied by T. Or in this case, the ratio between volume and temperature will always give us a constant. Okay, right, but we also looked at Guy Lussac's law. Okay, Guy Lussac's law uh, simply said, look, uh, if we're looking at the, you know, we're looking at the relationship in this case between pressure as well as temperature, right? But what we found out was that the pressure of any fixed volume of gas is directly proportional to the temperature. And so we said, well, look, uh, pressure is equal to a constant multiplied by the temperature, right? So today, what we are now going to look at is combining all of those principles together, right? So we know in this case, uh, pressure over the temperature okay so if I were to put it this way pressure over temperature is equal to a constant right so we know this gives us a constant but we also know that uh, the volume over the temperature gives us a constant but we also know that the pressure multiplied by the volume gives us a constant so simply put we can simply say well pressure multiplied by the volume over the temperature must therefore give us a constant. And so what we do under combined guess laws, we're simply going to say, right, for any fixed volume or rather for any fixed mass of gas, right, the product of the pressure volume and divided by the temperature, right, in the first instance, will be equal to the product, the volume, and in this case, divided by the temperature in the second instance. So this would be now the combined guess laws that we are now going to be using, right? And by the way, ladies and gents, I want us to remind ourselves, it really doesn't matter if you find that, you know, you are going to use a volume any uh, any uh, units that you use in terms of volume for as long as they are the same right you don't necessarily need to convert right uh, in this case the only thing that we are pedantic about is temperature we said when it comes to temperature we are always going to use the kelvin scale right and if we're given temperature in degrees celsius all we simply do is to convert to a temperature in Kelvin, we simply take the temperature in degrees and we uh, we add 273, right? So in this case, I want us to look at some examples uh, of how we are going to apply this. All right, let's take our very first example. So they say to us, we've got a gas that has a volume of 28 liters. Now, remember, I did say that, uh, you know, liters are an equivalent of cubic decimeters. So in this case, we are more than allowed to use that. 
right? They say at a temperature of 45 degrees at an unknown and, and an unknown pressure has its volume uh, increased to 34 liters and its temperature to 35 degrees. Uh, if I measure the pressure uh, after the change of uh, to be 2 atm, like 2.0 atm, what was the original pressure of the gas? Now, please, I want you to take it slowly when it comes to, uh, you know, answering the question. So we are going, let's do this. Let's say pressure one, volume one, temperature one. Okay, so we need to identify which ones are the first ones, the second one, okay, and the second one. Yeah, almost said the third one. All right, so now remember they said that we've got a gas that has a volume of 28 liters. So our volume is 28 liters, or you can say cubic decimeters, right? And they said we've got a temperature of 45 and a temperature of 45 degrees. But remember, we did say that temperature, we want that to be in Kelvin. So I'm going to simply convert that and say 45 plus 273, right? Okay, so in this case, that would give me, okay, so that would be 313, Okay, Kelvin. All right. So in this, uh, this no, not thirteen, rather, uh, thirty-eight. I mean, an eighteen, three, three, eighteen Kelvin. Okay, sorry about that. So that would be three eighteen Kelvin. Okay, so I want to know um, now what do I have as my second values, right? They say now at an unknown pressure. So. We did not know what the pressure is in the first instance, right? Now, they say to me that the volume is now increased to 34 liters. So, our second volume is now going to be 34 cubic decimeters or 34 liters. Nothing wrong if you keep uh, those units, right? Um, and they say to us, uh, its temperature is increased to 35 so I'm going to say 35 plus 273. Okay. Um, so in this case, I'm going to have 308. Yeah. So that's going to be 308 Kelvin. All right. So that's my second temperature, right? Now, they say to us, if I measure the pressure after the change to be 2 atm, so means that the pressure afterwards was 2 atmospheres, and I'm going to still leave it in those units. If you want to, you can convert it to uh, kilopascals, right? And remember, how do we change to kilopascals from uh, atmospheres? So I'm going to say 2 multiplied by Remember, one atmosphere is about or approximately 100 kilopascals. So if you want to, you can convert that to 200 kilopascals, all right? But there's really absolutely no need. So what we're going to do is we're going to express the pressure that uh, they want. We're going to express that in, in atmospheres. But if you want to, we can also express it in uh, kilopascals. Okay, so let's quickly calculate. So that's P1 V1 over T1, which is equal to P2 V2 over T2. And in this case, our first pressure, right? That's what we're looking for. Okay, now, uh, as I said, some of you prefer to find the, the subject of the formula first, or some of you prefer to substitute first. It's really neither here nor there, and it really depends on the curriculum that you are following. Okay, please follow the steps of the curriculum. Uh, because I'm doing, uh, in this case, the NSC, uh, they always prefer that we substitute first and then we find the subject of the formula, right? So this, I'm going to say, well, my volume one is 28 and my temperature one, that's 318. Okay, my pressure two, Okay, that's two atmospheres, or you can say 200 kilopascals, right? Maybe for those of you who are a little bit more 
pedantic. I'm going to uh, put that as 200 multiplied by the volume, right? Ah, sorry, uh, the volume is 34, okay, divided by the temperature, which is 308. Now, let's do our mathematical gymnastics, right? So we're going to cross multiply. I'm going to have P1 multiplied by 28 multiplied by 308, right? Which is equal to 318 multiplied by 200, which is my pressure in kilopascals, multiplied by 34. And all I need to do is divide by that 28 times 308. What I do on the left, I do on the right. Uh, 28 times 308, right? So that cancels with that. And now we can find our pressure. Okay, right. So uh, we're going to use our calculator. So 318, in fact, let's uh, have a fraction there. So 318 multiplied by 200 multiplied by 34, okay? And we're going to divide that, okay? Go to the denominator, multiply by, uh, divide by 28 times 308, okay? And I get a pressure of 250.74 now kilopascals. Of course, uh, if you used uh, ATMs, right, you would have uh, gotten a pressure of about 2.5 ATM, right? So definitely this tells us that our initial pressure was actually greater in this case, right? All right, so we shall go to the next one. And of course, you can use it with two and see what that gives you. All right, now let's go to the second question. All right, looking at the second question, they say to us, we've got a 1.75 liter sample of helium at 71 degrees and 1.39 uh, atmospheres. All right, they say this was compressed uh, to 1.12 liters at 3.02 atmospheres, what is the new temperature? All right, so let's first uh, identify, okay, which one is our pressure? 1, 1, T1, okay, and we want pressure 2, volume 2, and T2. Right, so pressure 1 in this case, okay, um, we are looking at 1.39 atmospheres, okay, I'm going to leave it in atmospheres this time, okay, and my volume is 1.75 uh, liters, okay, and my temperature, they gave me 71 degrees, but remember, at 71 plus 273, okay, so if we add that up, that's going to give us uh, 300 and, um, right, 7 plus 7, that gives us uh, 14, okay, so that's going to be 344 Kelvin, okay. And then uh, pressure two, we're going to have in this case, right. So they told us we've increased it or we compressed it uh, to 1.12 liters and 3.02 ATM. So we know our pressure two is 3.02 ATM, right? Uh, but in this case, we also have a volume of 1.12 liters right so we want the temperature the second temperature okay so let's do exactly what we did so p1 v1 over t1 which is equal to p2 v2 over t2 okay right so 1.39 multiplied by the volume 1.75 
okay over that temperature which is 344 okay will be equal to uh, in this case uh, for pressure 2 okay we are given 3.02 multiplied by volume 2 1.12 and we're looking for temperature 2 okay so again I am going to cross multiply in this case so it means T2 multiplied by the numerator of the other uh, fraction so that's t2 times 1.39 times 1.75 which is equal to 344 times 3.02 times 1.12 okay divided by 1.39 times 1.75 okay what you do on the left, we do on the right. So we divide by 1.39 times 1.75. Okay, this cancels with that. And so T2 will be, all right, let's take our calculator. Uh, so we've got 344. So 344 times 3.02 times 1.12 and please just verify that my calculations are correct and of course you can al always correct me if uh, there is a mistake i make i'm just as human as you are all right so we we get to t2 uh, to be 478.33 right and please remember that temperature is in kelvin Right. If you do want to, um, you know, take it back to uh, degrees Celsius, you know, in case they say that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that and now we're going to subtract. OK, and uh, we're going to say, right, 478.33 minus 273. OK, just going to subtract there. OK, so minus. 273 okay and i get a temperature of 205 degrees celsius okay right i hope that makes sense ladies and gents so it means that that new uh you know that guess under those uh you know uh, changes the new temperature should actually be 205 degrees all right, ladies and gents, uh, I hope that makes sense. Okay, so uh, the next time we'll be looking at the ideal gas equation. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. Otherwise, from me for now, don't forget to subscribe and like and share with your friends. I'll see you next time. Shop, shop.